Have you ever thought about what all you can do with a six by six piece of cardstock? Let's just see. So recently I got to thinking, you know, we can do a whole lot with very little cardstock. And I thought, what if I did a video showing you a bunch of projects with a six by six piece? And that's what I'm going to do today. So we're going to start our first project, which is a self closing box and we're going to start with a six by six piece of cardstock and we're going to make some score marks okay so our first set of score marks are going to be half an inch and then five and one fourth now i want to tell you this here this larger section at the bottom is going to be the bottom of your bag so you can kind of remember that okay or your box and then we're going to turn it one time and we're going to score at three quarters at two and seven eighths at three and five eighths and then at five and three fourths. Okay, so there's our score marks. Let's fold all of these score marks. While I'm folding, we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which happens to be my grubby um, cutting mat that I'm using. This is an older mat, but we're having some work done in the studio today. And I wanted to film, I wanted to get this for you guys done, and I just had to make me a makeshift spot to film, so that's what we're doing. All right, so I'm getting all of my score lines done, and this is the best way to go because you can see all your lines if you do this. So get those all folded and creased. Now, there are some pieces that we don't need, and most of them live here at the top. So we're going to grab our scissors, and what I want to do first is I want to keep this section here. Now, when you do this at home, you'll be able to see exactly what you're cutting, but I'm going to cut on this score line and this score line, and then I'm going to show you. I'm cutting that little section away right there. Now, here you can see this is like the side of our box. I'll turn that, you can see it, that's the side of our box. We want to split here to get us our lid. This is gonna be our closing lid, okay? And then everything left here, we don't need. So on that score mark, we're just gonna cut that away. Now, when you're doing this at home, this will be a lot easier. You'll be able to see this no problem because you've made all your score marks and it'll all make perfect sense to you. If for some reason you struggle, just, you know, trace your lines. That'll be fine so you can see them. All right, so we've got our little quarter of an inch down here. It stays. Now, at the bottom, what we want to do is we want to slice up each of these, okay? So I'm going to slice up to that bottom score mark that we made. This paper cuts so pretty. It's like it just slices so nice. And down here, I'm going to slice and I'm going to take that little bit off. All right. So I'm going to lay this down and let you see what we've done so far. Okay. So we cut off a little section here. We cut off that section there, this one little piece, and then we just split each of these guys. All right. Now let's look at the bottom. So this is going to be one of our closing sections, and this one's going to be a closing section, but these guys are just going to fold in. And anytime we do that, we want to make sure that we angle cut these edges because we don't want to have any of that bulk. So on those little tabs, let's angle cut. The reason I want to do this six by six video is because I feel like with the holidays coming up, you're going to have lots of different events to go to or lots of different things you'll be doing that you might want to take treats for. And this is a good little way to do it or lots of different ways to do it. All right. I'm going to take this little quarter of an inch side and we'll turn it in to whatever the inside of your box is. OK, and now I'm going to close this guy over like this. Do you see how I've just kind of flattened it out and left this kind of hanging? That's because I'm going to be able to glue this flat and then open it back out. So on that little quarter of an inch flat we've got right there, let's apply some glue. I'm just going to run glue up this little strip just like that and then fold this down into that glue. Now some of mine is going to seep out and that is no big deal. You, One of the things about art glitter glue I found is it likes pressure. So if you press on there, it gives you a really good um, close and a really good adhesion. Now I want to show you this. My fold is a little off or my, my creasing is, so I'm just going to let that be my new fold. See how I just laid that flat? So now this is what we're working with, this kind of tubular box. Let's close the bottom up. We're going to tuck these two tabs in. All right. Now because my lid section is here, this is actually going to be the front of my bag, which is kind of weird. It's not usually how we do it, but I want my mechanism or my tucking mechanism to be in the back. So that means I want to fold this one over and not tuck it under. So that means I'm going to take the back and make it the tuck under piece. All right, I'm going to add glue to that. And then I'm just going to lay this piece over. And while it's wet, 
I'll square everything up in my fingers. And then I'm going to stand this up and press in to close that down. Just press that down. You can even kind of slide it down there at the bottom. There we go. So now we got our bottom of our box all closed up. Now here's the cool part. This is going to lock the whole thing closed. But before we do that, I'm going to take my scissors and do a slight angle right here on this side and the other. I'm just taking a little bit of that bulk off and I'm making sure that I don't have that score line hanging over. You'll see what I mean. That score line can kind of hang over the edge. All right. You can also, in my original video, I corner rounded that. So you can also do the corner round. Um, all right. So I'm going to push these sides in like this and kind of establish the side of our box. Isn't that cute? I just love this box. And now put your treats in. Okay. You want to put your treats in before you close it, but then you're just going to take that flap and tuck it. Do you see how I'm going to tuck it between the little fold and the crease that we made? And it's just going to lock it into place. You have to kind of work with it, but that's okay because this is your whole closure. So we've just tucked that flap in to this back section here. And look how cute this box is we've made with one piece of six by six. These are quick and easy and so cute. You can put a lot in here, a candy bar, a cookie, a brownie, um, loose candy, hard candy. Who knows what all you could put in here? Put a little um, tag on it or whatever, and it is perfect to use for the holidays. All right, let's look at another way to use a six by six. Now for this one, I'm kind of going to cheat, but only a little bit. And here's what I mean. I'm going to take a piece of 12 by 12 and I'm going to cut it down to six by six. So that'll get me four pieces of six by six. This is one of my favorite projects because you know I love an as many as. And just because I'm going to show you how to do it with one piece of six by six, it doesn't mean that you can't take a whole piece of 12 by 12 and make a bunch of these guys. OK, so I'm going to cut this down like so. So four pieces of six by six. I'm going to put three aside and we're just going to play with one. OK. All right, so with that one piece of six by six, let's grab our scoreboard, okay? We're gonna make some scores here. For my paper, the orientation doesn't matter because I'm using plaid, but if your orientation matters, you'll wanna think about that before you do this part. But I'm gonna be scoring the bottom of this project, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna score two and three fourths and three and one fourth. That's really all I need to score. I think I jumped my line there, but two and three fourths and three and one fourths here. Okay, and now we can go to our trimmer. Now, in the spirit of as many as, I'm going to cut this guy down and use all of this six by six. Okay, and another thing I really love about this project is I get to use one of my punches. I'm going to use this one from Dress My Craft. This is a tag maker punch, and you can see here that I can do this with a two inch piece. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to cut this six by six piece down to two inch strips. But you see where we scored it here? I want that to run horizontally and I'm going to cut it vertically. OK, so I'm going to cut two inches across those score lines. So now those score lines live here in the middle. OK, and I'm going to cut two inches here across those score lines. So I have two two inch pieces and then I'm just going to check that this is two inches. Um, See, it hangs over a little bit. It's either how I cut it earlier or the manufacturer might just be generous with their paper. Who knows? But I want to check that they're all two inch pieces because we're going to be putting them into that punch. All right. So now let's grab out our punch. I'm going to take this guy and it has these little grooves, right? I'm going to slide this in to the two inch section and push it all the way up until it stops and punch. And you'll see what we get right there, right? So now I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing again on the opposite end and that's what we get. Now, this little guy will fold on those score lines that we made just like this and it leaves you a spot to put a sweet little candy inside, all right? Like a Hershey's Kiss, two Hershey's Kisses, one of those nugget bars, um, maybe Vince's favorite. I cannot think of the name of them, but though it, it's come to mind because it'd be perfect. They're those little peanut butter and crispy kind of white um, sugary. I don't remember what they're called, but they would fit in here perfect. And how cute to just have this sitting at somebody's table, like when they come to visit or something like that. Just a cute little 
thinking of you, here's a little sweet treat. Even an Andes mint, so many things you could put in here. Now, we did this with six by six, right? Because I just want to show you how to use up a piece of six by six. However, imagine if you did this with an eight by eight, you'd get even more space for candy. If you did it with a 10 by 10, or if you did it with um, even a 12 by 12, you'll get longer area to put something inside. But how sweet is this? to put a candy inside there and then tie a bow here, maybe a little sentiment here. And I just think these are so cute and you can get so many from one piece of 12 by 12. And when I say so many, I actually mean you can get 12 from one piece of 12 by 12, because three, six, nine, 12. Let me show you what this same thing looks like if you use an eight by eight, just to give you an idea of how you can up the size. So here's a strip that's two by eight and we're gonna put this into our trimmer. We're going to score this one at three and three fourths and at four and one fourth. Okay. Now you would do this just like we did earlier with a bigger piece and score it all at one time so you can get more at one time. I just want to show you how big this is and how you can just step it up as long as you keep your squares an even number. So you're cutting that two inch situation. All right, let's put it into our punch. And the two inch guide, slide that in and then slide this one in. And you'll be able to put all kinds of goodies in this size. Slide that away. So look how big this one is. So let's compare it to our other one. Look at the difference. So you can step this up based on the size of candy. And it doesn't have to be candy that hides behind here. You could put like a cookie that hangs over and have this as a little decorative kind of belly band. Super cute. So that's another way to use a six by six and even make it an as many as style six by six. So this is going to be our third and last project for this video. But if you're enjoying this video, I want you to tell me if you want to see more six by six projects. I have a notebook full that I've been collecting and I think you'll enjoy them. All right. This project turns our page on the diagonal and I think it is so cool. It's a Christmas tree treat box that I saw on a channel called Rejoice and Create. Now we're going to leave a link for that, her video below because I think she did a really good job and you're going to want to see it. But I'm just going to show you my version. Okay. So using that six by six on an angle like this, we're going to put this in our scoreboard using our center line. Now, a lot of you guys ask me why I have this mark in the middle of my um, scoreboard. And I did this just using a Sharpie and running it down so I could have that mark. This is so I can line a project up at the top and bottom when it's on the diagonal. So you see down here how I'm lining it up and at the top how I'm lining it up. That comes in handy for this particular project. Now, once you've got your paper on its diagonal, we're going to kind of float score, meaning I've got to come out here and kind of float to do my score. But I'm going to come from the six inch mark to seven and a half. That's an inch and a half away. And I'm going to score it at an inch and a half away from the center. OK, so just scoring just like this. Now, I want to do this same mark on this side, but my hand gets in the way. I'm not real good at that. So I'm going to turn this guy around completely around and then I'm going to line him up again top and bottom and score again at seven and a half. It's just easier for me. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on its side and do the other points. Okay. So we've got those lines going across and now we're going to work up and down. Now here, instead of moving out an inch and a half, we want to move out half an inch. Okay. So I'm going to go from six to six and a half. And I'm going to make this score mark. And this one's going to go all the way across. All right. And then this time I think I can handle this because I don't have to go quite as far back. I'm going to go to five and a half and make a mark here. Do my score mark all the way across. All right. Now something I'm going to do different than she did in her video. I want to add my tabs here. I want the score mark to kind of tell me where my tab will live. So from that score I just did at six and a half, I'm going to do one more at seven. But this guy is only going to go to that score mark that I did across. You see that? Let's do it on the other side too. So this one will get scored at five. And it will only go to that first score mark. Okay. Now, if you would like a PDF of this or something that you can um, look at, you know, a printable of some sort you can use on Rejoice and Create site, she has one in her video for you. So I want you to check that out so you can see it. Now I flipped it around and I'm doing the same thing here, seven inch to our first score mark. And over here, I'm going to do five to our first score mark. Okay, so that gets us ready to do the fun part. Isn't that cool? All right, so when we turn this 
out to do our cutting, here's what we need to do first. We need to do some pencil drawing, okay, some marks for ourselves. So I added this this first little score mark you're seeing right here, I added this one. You're not going to use this one to do your pencil marks. I want you to use this second one where it crosses over all the way across. That's the one we're going to use for our pencil mark. So what I'm going to do is make a mark here so you can see which ones I'm using so you can get your points just right. So those are the ones we're going to use right there in the middle. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to take our ruler and we want to line up at the point of the page. Ooh, let me come down a little bit. We want to line up at the point of the page to the dot, and we're going to make a pencil mark. Now, she does this a little different than me. I'm telling you, go watch her video. She does hers a little different than me. Um, so you might like her technique here at the top, but I think this one's going to work for how I plan to do it. All right, so now we've made that little point. You see where our Christmas tree shape is coming in? Do you see that? All right, and now let's do the other side the same, from point to pencil mark or to second score line. If you don't need the pencil mark, you can just go to the second score line, just like this. All right, so that's what we've got. Now, let me show you some stuff we're going to do here. I'm going to use a different marker to make this make sense, okay? So we've got that, um, our tree drawn in, okay? This piece here is going to be a tab. So we're going to cut at that first score line there. Okay, we're going to open that up. So I'm going to do that really quick. I'm just going to use my scissors here. And I'm just going to cut straight up the side of that score mark. Just like that. Okay, just opened it up. Then I'm going to cut all the way down my pencil mark. So from this middle down, I'm going to cut. I think this is a fun project. It's something different. And once you see me do it, it makes sense. But I'm really taking my time to explain it, okay? So from that score mark that we have here cut, I want to do an angle cut here because this is just a tab, okay? So I'm going to come right back like this and snip to that point. Now I'm going to lay this down. I want you to see it. So we cut straight down the pencil mark, straight up our score mark, and did a little angle. This tab is going to help close our tree up, okay? All right, now we want to do that all the way around. So let's do it over here again. So I've got this top score mark. I'm going to cut that score mark away right to the side. Okay, then I'm going to cut my pencil mark. You could use your long shears here. I find that when I use my long shears, when I close the tip, they kind of rip my page. That's why I prefer these for this kind of cutting. And then let's do our little angle, just like that. So that's what it looks like, okay? We want to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to make those same cuts, and we'll get right back together. So here's what we're working with. It looks like an alien with ears, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's really, really going to be cute. All right. There's another thing you can do if you want to. This is going to be the size of our box. If you want to cut this flat, I'll show you. If you don't have to, you can have a point. But I'm just going to go from score mark to score mark here on the end and just cut that like that so that it'll be nice and flat on the side. And I'm going to do the same over here. But again, not necessary, but I think it'll look cool in the end product. All right, let's start folding and gluing. So I'm going to fold my points up. You know what? I think I'm going to fold to this side because I think this tiny plaid is so cute for the Christmas tree. Let's crease. Fold this guy up like so. And then let's fold these side tabs in. Flip around and do the other tab. And then this side. And now you guessed it. We're going to glue these in. Now this box has an unusual shape, but I think it's really, really cute. I think you're going to like it too. Okay, let's put some glue on our tabs. And each one will then get folded in and we'll line it up with the edge of our tree. If you wanted, I just noticed this too, if you wanted your box to be a little deeper, you can even cut down a little further on your tab. You don't want to go too far because you do want it to stay together, but this is such a cute different box to me. I think this will be neat. I'd be interested to hear what you'd put in it. Tell me in the comments what you'd put in a box shaped like this because it is a little different. Your opening is not quite as big as a standard box, but it's so cute. Also, I challenge you, go watch her video. And let me tell you why. She does the cutest little topper. It's an, it's an older video. It's not um, 
it's not from this year or anything. I actually can't remember what year it's from, but she does some cute little things on the top of her tree and she edits it a little bit. And she also does some little decorated ones for you to see. And they're so cute. You've got to go check it out. By the way, she doesn't know I'm filming this video. She doesn't know I'm mentioning her. So if you want to say, saw you on Mome, that's fine because I didn't even mention it. Now, look, we've got a tree and we've got these sides. And this was cute to me. She kind of pressed in and brought the top together. And then she closed the top. She used a little clothespin at the top, which I think is super cute. So you can close this at the top in so many different ways. I'm not going to close mine. I'm going to add a star to it. But think about this too. You could run a string up the side. You could poke holes in these edges and make it have a little string. So many things you can do. Well, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some gold cardstock and my little star punch, and I'm just going to put a star up there. And again, can you imagine decorating it with so much bling or... Even little hole punches. You can just do a bunch of little hole punches. But this is so cute. To have this sitting at a table when somebody comes to have dinner or to pile these up, make them for your Sunday school kids. Oh my goodness, it'd be so adorable. Look how stinking cute that is. You could even use a bigger star. I wasn't sure what size, but I think you could go a lot to different size of stars up there. So stinking cute. All right, let's bring back over what we made today. So here we go, our three projects. I went ahead and tied a bow at the top of this one so you could see it and you can imagine adding a little sentiment, maybe a little circle punch or something like that here. Wouldn't this be cute to make, like to sit around your coworker's desk just when they come in, just a good morning treat? I think it'd be so cute. But how handy are these for the holiday season? Little ideas to give you something to package your gifts in. Now, if you would like to see more, I have a, I literally have a notebook where I'm collecting these because I think they're so handy. If you would like to see more of these projects, let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to film more. So we'll call this a part one, maybe. See what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed showing you how to use a 6x6. Six six. I want to see how you use a 6x6. Six six. The best place to do that is head to my Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I, and share your projects with me so we can see what you're making. Hey, thanks so much for being here today, and until next time, Bye now.